I'm Dewan Johnson. Welcome to the Think Bigger Actors podcast, where I share with you different kinds of talks and coachings and conversations with actors and industry professionals on thinking bigger. I hope these conversations will help you on your path to success because I believe success is an inside job that starts with your mindset and the thoughts you hold dominant in your mind. Change your thoughts and you change your world. Your path to thinking bigger begins now. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Think Bigger Actors Podcast. I'm your host, Dewan Johnson, and we are back for season four. <laughs> season four, baby. I I am so excited. I have missed you so much. So very, 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 what? Very, 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 very much. But, oh, man, it feels so good to be back in this chair. I've, I, listen, I've also enjoyed having my time off, you know, between the recording of the podcast. Yeah, I've been getting my entire life together during that time, but I, I, I can just say it with confidence that I definitely missed you. And so if you are joining me um, for the first time, allow me to reintroduce myself to Juan Johnson. That's me, working actor, dad, partner, uh, keynote transformational speaker, certified life coach. And I am also I am also the founder of Think Bigger Coaching, where I help actors book off of self-tapes and get to their dream roles faster with a booking mindset. Yes, mindset is everything. You know, for years they called me the mindset guy because it's what I love to do. And when you find something that you love to do, Make a business out of it, y'all. Make a business out of it so you can do it every single day. I just want to let you know, though, there are so many great episodes of this podcast that we are standing on the shoulders of that came before this. Oh, so if you are looking for something or someone to binge, pick me. Pick me. Pick all the guests I've had on here uh, before who have shared their inspiration, their action steps, their roadmaps, their tears, their mindset up levels on the success of their career. We're talking about directors, showrunners, actors who are series regulars, some that are not. I've had the gamut of a casting. This podcast has been so universally divine sent. I'm, I'm just, I'm so thankful that I get to show up in your ear, you know, every other week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You always, 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 always want to stick around to the end for the D12 shot, which is my take on the B12 shot. Get it? D12, B12, dad joke. I'm in. I get it. (laughs) Because you are always, you're always going to walk away with a loving boost or a hug or a kick in the behind because I stepped on your toes. But I want to let you know that I'm serious about this, but I am committed. This is my promise to you. I am committed. And some might even say obsessed with our success. And that success most always, and I mean always, starts with mindset. So if you haven't subscribed to this podcast, please do. Please, 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 please go to Apple iTunes and, you know, hit that little subscribe button. Bing! Subscribe and please leave a review as well. It helps more actors find us. So, you know, share, 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 share. And if you find a nugget like in this and you're like, oh, that was a good nugget and you are moved by it, I promise you, I promise if you are moved by something I've said, one of the guests I've said, someone else will be too. So make sure that you screenshot that, put that on your Instagram, put that on your TikTok, and just share it, share it, share it, share it. I know there's tons of podcasts out there. I know, I know. I, I When I'm going for my walks, it is something that I see too. So I don't take it lightly how I get to show up in your space, in your space, in your frequency, in your vibration. It is no accident that we are here with each other and we are finding each other. I am here because I have been so fortunate to do what I love to do, and that is act. And I am committed to sending the elevator back down to help others do what they want to do and act. So I, I love it. I, I, I get to do that. I, I was on seven seasons of an Amazon's longest running show, Bosch. Yes, I will show receipts. <laughs> an ABC-backed Emmy campaign for my recurring role on Grey's Anatomy, and a host of other shows, a host of other shows that allow me to say that I am a consistently, consistently working actor. But what is a consistently working actor? What is it? But seriously, what does that phrase even mean? 
Whoo, y'all, we are going to talk about that this season more than you like because that is something that has been on my mind since I left you and has come up over and over and over and over again. And I'm going to keep it real with you. Listen, if this is your first time joining us, uh, (laughs) I keep it all the way real with you on this podcast. Why? Because I want you to know all the ins and outs of the industry, not just the pretty parts, not just the red carpets or when your show gets in deadline and you get your first, not not just those pretty parts. That's why I talk openly about my depression I, I, I had last year one that I went through after coming off of a show for seven seasons and not going straight back into another one, you know, which we'll get to in a second. Don't worry. That's, we're going to talk about that. I talk openly about being diagnosed with CPTSD last year too. I didn't Oh my gosh, that's a whole nother one. But we're going to talk openly about money and actors. Why is money something that actors seem not to want to talk about openly unless they are complaining about not having it or shaming others for asking for their worth or asking for what they should be asking for in contract negotiations. What's up? That's what we should be talking about. Money. Listen, we're going to get into that this season. We are we are going to get into that this season. But right now, I want to talk about you. I want to say thank you. I want to say thank you to all of the Think Bigger Tribe members who have been following me so strong for all these years and who have been sharing and and say thank you to the actors that take time to DM me, to take time to reach out to me and say that you have seen the podcast. When I am in the rooms in Arizona, when I am in the rooms in other spaces and you all are saying, I listen to your podcast, I am I am just floored by it. But I got I got a message. I got a DM from an actor. We're gonna call this actor, we're just gonna say Tony. It could be, you know, that's a that's a very unisex name. And so we're gonna just say that. Tony, for privacy's sake, here is the the DM that I got that this person messaged me. And it reads: I've been listening to the Think Bigger podcast all week. And it's been helping me out of a dark place after turning 40 last month and not being where I want to be in my career. Can somebody feel that? I mean, and not being where you want to be in your career? Okay. Okay. I've been the happiest or most content for no reason than I have been since I can remember. My favorite part of your podcast are your recaps at the end, actually. So many nuggets of wisdom and encouragement. To be honest, you've probably saved me. And I mean that. Crazy how the universe works. I got my first SAG voucher years ago on an episode of Bosch and have been following you on Facebook for a while, but just just discover the Think Bigger podcast. Keep doing them. They really are healing hearts and spirits of broken artists. You're a gem. Can't wait until we are on set one day. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm emotional thinking about that. Like I don't, it's it's intense for me to read something like that because, you know, I, I'm just this this guy who grew up in Kendall, Florida, and decided that I am going to follow my dream of being an actor. And when I got out here and I loved it, I loved being an actor, but I remember thinking that there is more to it. There's more to it. I remember being on my second season of Bosch thinking there's more to it. And that's how Think Bigger Coaching got born. I was like, I'm going to, you know, give back and I want to help actors and I want to keep working. And, and, you know, a lot of people think that it wasn't, I was, I was just starting to think bigger because I just needed another paycheck. I really wanted to work with actors. I wanted to work with people and to get a message like that where it says, you saved me. And I really mean that I am, I'm just beside myself. I, I, I've always dreamed of helping people with my artistry, my craft. It's one of the reasons I started acting. It, It very much tied into my why, why I get up in the morning. But to hear this message back in a time when so much, I mean, so much is happening in our world. It, it just, it just really touched me. So I want to say thank you, Tony, for reminding me that this is all bigger than me. It's so much, so much, so much more than just scooting my chair, scooting my chair up to this mic and, 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 and just talking and rapping with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll say this again. If you haven't subscribed, please do. So more people can hear this 
in other parts of the country and other parts of the world. You know, I always say Bangladesh or London or, you know, in Africa. I just I want other parts of the world to hear this podcast and hear this. And I want to touch more people like that. So please keep those messages coming. You know where to find me at Think Bigger Coaching on, on the Instagram. Or you can have my email at info at thinkbiggercoaching.com. Info at thinkbiggercoaching.com. That's my email. And I... I'm just, I'm getting all warm and fuzzy inside, y'all. All right, today there is no guests, just me. You get me. I try to start every season with me in it, or last season was my parents. Gosh, what did I, what was I thinking having my dad and my mom on? <laughs> if you have not heard that episode, please go back and listen to that episode. It is my love letter to you, to anybody who's ever had parents who have not always been so supportive. My parents haven't always been so supportive of my acting career, and they're still low key. I could be working on a show, like I said, for seven seasons, and my mom's like, are you done acting? yet it's just it's just in her dna i forgive her i know that she is not going to love me that way it is it, until i make it on a, uh, one of her shows and then it'll be something that'll be great but we're going to go over the uh my my top things i learned about myself and the acting business post bosch post bosch while entering into uh my uplifted and involved space last year like it just was uh, a lot and i think just so much growth in the industry from life that happened last year. So these things, these seven things are there in no specific order. But you know, last year was a doozy for me. You heard me say a little bit about that in the beginning. A lot of things that I I knew, but I needed to be reminded again happened for me. A lot of those things had to come up again. A, A lesson is repeated to you as many times as it takes to learn it. As many times as it takes to learn it. Not just understand it, but learnt it, y'all. Learnt it. And I'll just say this. I'll just say this. I'm not trying to tease you, but I'm going to be real honest with you. Number seven, number seven on this list is something I am still trying to embody, something I wish was said to me 20 years ago, something I think that if you really get this, wherever you are in your career, if you really get this with grace, it will make your life so much easier as an actor. I I might even just say I promise. And I never say I promise about things. You know what I mean? But I'm just saying, I think it might make your life so much easier. So we're going to get to number seven. But first, we are going to start with number one. Number one, auditioning and being on set are not the same thing. All right, pull up a chair. I went on so many auditions these past couple of years, even in the pandemic. Yes, even in the pandemic, I was auditioning a lot, probably more than I've ever auditioned in my whole entire life. And I will tell you this, the number one thing missing out of the majority of my tapes, out of my um, auditions, was me, was me, was my take on the role. Listen, I, you see, I, I got into my, my my working actor's brain that, that that must have forgotten what it was like to audition. That you know, the part of the brain that only remembered what it was like on sets. And I've been on a lot of sets, and so I'm just like, oh, I'm working, and so I know what they're looking for. I know what to do in this audition so that I can get booked. But that is not true. I kept saying to myself, and sometimes subconsciously, I know what they want. I've seen this guy on set on multiple, multiple shows I've been on, never really diving into the characters, never really pulling the scene apart, never really bringing me to the role. Here's what I know for sure. If you don't show up as you, fully you, with your take on the scene, under the given circumstances, you are shooting yourself in the foot. You will nine out of 10 times be be doing what everyone else was doing, is doing, or thinking about doing. You will be doing that exact, same exact thing. And, and you will probably get that note, bring more of you to the, to the role, which is like, we are, I get so frustrated even saying it until I really understand it. I understood what it means when a casting or a director say, can you bring more of you to the role? And it makes perfect sense because I've been cutting myself out of it for so long because I've been so attached to what do casting directors want? What do directors want? I haven't stopped and said, what do I want to do with this scene? Do you feel me? Have you been doing that? 
The only way that happens is if you bring you to the role, is if you start to ask yourself some more powerful questions around your audition, around your process, as the character, all of that stuff needs to be happening. And I wasn't doing that. I'm so glad I learned that lesson. So glad I learned it because it's booking time. Number two, get outside. Go out side. And this might be for me because I found out during the pandemic that I am extreme extrovert, you know, with definitely introverted (laughs) uh, tendencies. Like I like to recharge a little bit by myself, uh, you know, but I also enjoy being out side. There's so much time that I spend inside at my computer, working on my coaching business, running lines inside, and I forget to just go outside, even for a walk around the block or, you know, it's your mental health. Your mental health depends on it. You know, my journey to losing 17 pounds, and I talked a lot about this last year, um, and, and getting my mind right, depended on getting outside. I caught COVID in May of last year. And let me just tell you, I got to say that I know people in my family have died from COVID. I, we've lost loved ones in my family, but, and, but I'm still going to say this and I hope I don't get too much pushback. But for me, COVID was one of the best things that could have happened because it stopped me from going. I was going, 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 and it stopped me from going and it made me take a look at myself because I was quarantined. I was like just me and my thoughts by myself for a couple of weeks. I just had to stop and talk to myself. And that's what I did. That's what I did. I just stopped and talked to myself. And I remember um, like day six or seven of that quarantine where I kind of was like, well, I just want to be done with this. I'm still testing positive. And I remember thinking, okay, stop for a second. There's a reason all this is still happening to you. If you are still testing positive, you're still in quarantine, maybe the universe is trying to tell you something. So I broke out my journal and I started journaling and I started listening to the podcast. And that is when things shifted for me in my mindset because I stopped going and I got still. And if you ever want to hear an answer, get still and ask for the answer. Like what is happening? What's going on right now? And a lot of things came up during that time, but one of the big things was I did not, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't like, I didn't like my body. I wasn't happy in my body. My mental state was bad, um, and I needed to get out and just move my body. So when I, as soon as I tested uh, negative, I got out. I put my headphones in and I started walking. I started listening to podcasts. I started like putting different thoughts into my mind because everything that I had gotten up to that point was getting me what I was getting. I want you to hear this part. This is a really, really big one. To get to your next level, the things that got you to the level that you are at will not be the things that get you to that next level. That is very important. And I understood that so clearly when I was coming out of COVID. And so I started walking and, you know, by the grace of the universe and everybody out there, like I had a trainer that I have had on the podcast last year. His name is Nick Duncan. He reached back out to me and I just told him my situation and we just started working on my mental thing. And it was just about getting out. It was just about eating right. And within, I would say from July to September, I lost 17 pounds by meal prepping, by working with Nick. It was just amazing. So that's one of the things that I learned how much my psyche was tied into, um, it was tied into, uh, you know, getting outside and moving my body. And I was on a little bit of a depression, a major depression, because I had just come off of a show. So, you know, these are things that I don't think everybody talks about. And I wanted to make sure that I brought a spotlight to this. Get outside. Your mental health depends on it. Number three, your tribe matters. Your tribe matters. And, you know, I find myself with a, without a lot of friends, a lot of very close friends in my life right now. Um, you know, that that's, could be the pandemic. It could be like the shakeup or the shakedown of the pandemic. It could be because I have kids and a family right now. And so things automatically change when that happens. I have a booming career and a booming business. So I put a lot of time in that. But I have to say, Remember the people that you surround yourself. So when I do come up for air, so when I do, you know, the people I spend my time with, it has to be quality, good, 
good time because I'm not here for no drama. I'm not here for no BS. And so when I look left, when I look right, when I look to the other side, you know, I want to make sure up down that the people are in my tribe, that they matter. So much of the things that hold us back, that slows down our dreaming are our, it's our community, it's our circumstances, and it's our circumference. So remember all of those things when you are looking about, looking around with your tribe. And sometimes we got to make some hard decisions and say, okay, that person has to go. Look around you and you just think that that person, their season's up with us. And that's okay. Bless and release. Oh my goodness, number four. Whew, hot takes, hot takes. Everybody's like, hot takes. Lord, 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 Lord. I learned this in my career last year. Stop listening to people that are not going in the direction that you are going. They have never gone there and probably will never go, but they are out there giving you information about hot takes. This is a hot take. Don't put, did you want to be a series regular on your goals or your as a vision? Hot takes, because it has, you can't, uh, you have no control over your booking. Listen to me. Pull up a chair and listen to me. Those people that are saying that mean so very, very, very well. They mean well. They, But what they should be saying is learn how to quantify your goals. So if your goal is to be a series regular by the end of this year, then you are working towards that. Why not put that on your vision? Why not make that a goal? And why not take action steps? Why not regulate your mindset to be around what you are going for? Why not do that? And then shoot for it. Well, you know that saying, if you shoot for the stars and you get the moon, you are closer than you would have been if you had not put it up there at, in the beginning right? Same thing applies here when we're talking about all these jobs. I want to book my first co-star or I want to book, put it up there. Listen to me, put it up there, but learn how to quantify it. At the end of the first quarter, what have you done? What steps have you taken? Write it down in a journal, write it down in your phone. Great. What action steps am I going to take next? This is what I'm going to be taking. I'm going to take a class here. I'm going to work this way. This is all of me working towards me getting my next series regular, right? That's what it is. That's what we're doing. But people are out there telling you, don't do this. Don't shoot for that. No. Put your goals out there. Go for them. It's okay if you don't reach them. But if you don't shoot for them, you definitely will not get them. Yeah, I, I, I want to be honest and say, if I'm going to shoot for the moon, I'm going to land on that bad boy. So shoot for your booking. Shoot for your series record. Just make sure that we are quantifying it properly. Okay, we got to learn that. You don't have like a problem with the direction you're going. We just have a problem with the way we're quantifying these goals. That's what it is. My step closer, what I've done in January to set myself up for the rest of this year, what I'm doing in February to set myself up for the rest of this year, what I'm doing in March to set myself up for the rest of this year, that stuff can't be taken away from you. Learn how to quantify your goals. Stop listening to people with these hot takes who are not going in the direction you have gone in or have not been in that direction. I, oof, I could go on and on and on, but just because you have an Instagram handle does not make you a coach. I said too much. I told you I was going to keep it real. I told you. Somebody just threw their phone. Somebody just got mad and threw their phone. Please DM me and tell me if that was you. <laughs> Do not send me a cracked screen. <laughs> Oh my God, I'm getting so much more heated as I go on because these are so, so good of what I've learned. We only got three more to go. We are on number five. Number one was auditioning and being on set are not the same. Get outside was number two. Your mental health depends on it. Number three, your tribe matters. And number four, stop listening to people that aren't going in the direction that you are going. So here we are at number five. And this one's a good one. I've learned this and I've seen it and I have, I'm getting a, a detector <laughs> about it, right? Right? A detector, lie detector, but it's not a lie detector. It is a BS detector. Be mindful of the thoughts of actors past. We're not the same. 
We do not have the same journey of the actors from previous years, from previous decades, from previous experiences, and yet we are still carrying around their consciousness, the consciousness of actors, of agents, of teachers, of, 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 of casting, of everybody of the past. Y'all, collective thought is so real and so intense and it is so magnetic. It will continue to pull you in over and over again. I have said this before, but I will say it again. Remember, there is a gravitational pull to sameness. There is a gravitational pull to sameness. There are actors, past thoughts that we keep jumping into. The cult of average, the group actor. Think, what do you mean by that, Dewan? There are thoughts of actors past that we keep repeating. There is fear-based thoughts. There are, if you ever heard somebody say, oh, co-stars are so hard. That's an actor thought from the past that is a borrowed belief that does not have any weight here right now unless you give it weight. There are borrowed beliefs from actors past that wanted to struggle, that kept struggling. So that's what they did. We don't have to live that life of struggle anymore, of the striving actor. That is a collective thought. Oh, actors are scared of um, talking to their agents. Oh, I can't bother casting directors. That is a consciousness. We are tapping into an actor consciousness of past. And if we are continuing to tap into past actor thoughts by even the present thought of other actors that have tapped into that as well, we will continue to get the same thing over and over again. And there are so many actors out there that are jaded, that are upset, and I get it. I understand it. My heart goes out to you, but I am not a part of that tribe. That is not a part of that tribe. We're going to talk so much about this this season. So much. Whew, we, we are getting into this. Okay, number six. Number six. Here's what I want to say. And this is this is not something I, I'm just going to keep it real. Listen, the odds are not in your favor. The odds are not in our favor. They're just not. And that is okay. Because we have decided. We understand that. We know it. But we are here to win anyways. Again, what do you mean by that, Dewan? If of actors are what we call the famous actors. 95% of on a given year are unemployed. 5% of actors make over 50%. One in five actors qualify for health insurance each year. That means they make more than $27,000 a year. We get to decide how we want to continue to show up in this career. Gone are the days where we shop around the expired belief that if you can do anything else in life, but be an actor, go do that. That is a toxic belief that has left so many of our fellow actors jaded and disgruntled. So many of our fellow actors could be CEOs of or lawyers or entrepreneurs of their own granola brand, whatever it is. But no, we are recycling the myth of actors past. I just talked about this in number five. We are keeping up that low vibrational message. Understand this. Every, and I mean every person of wealth diversifies their income. Come at me. Come at me and tell me who doesn't. Even like the Vanderbilts who did jeans or something like that. They just have one pair of jeans, right? Everybody. Apple diversifies. You know, Elon Musk has all of these different things. PayPal, he did, right? Tesla. Why can't we? Because some acting teacher said to you at one point that if you can do anything else, then don't be an actor. Toxic, toxic belief. I'm going to tell you another story about a client that I just worked with that we will name. Here's a fun name. Let's say uh, Sam. Let's say Sam. Sam can be both name, right? It could be all the pronouns there with Sam. And we had worked, we're in this VIP client session. This person has worked with me on a VIP day and we spent the whole day together and we have come up, this person has said, I want to have a career like Quinta Brunson and I want to be a showrunner. I want to like, you know, run my own show and I'm going to write. We sat together and we put together a beautiful plan on how to get there. That's my specialty. I help my actors get to where they want to go, right? That's what I'm promising to do. So we get in this plan, we get there, we're done, we finish our whole day. And I pull back and I say, what do you think about this plan? This person says, it's good. I'm like, huh, 
That's good. You were really excited about that a second ago. What just happened? This person says, well, I know that we are looking for an agent, right? We're looking for an agent. And um, I don't want that agent to think that I am not serious about acting if we, uh, if they see that I am trying to also be a showrunner. My head just dropped down and I said, you don't want this bad enough. And you are living in the b- belief of actors past of you are not a serious actor if you are doing other things. Let me tell you something. Hold up. Wait a minute. Stop what you're doing. If you're on a walk, stop and listen to this part. You are a brand. And if you walk up to an agent and you say to that agent, Mr. Agent, I have a show that I'm getting ready to sell to ABC, that person will snatch you up so fast. You say, I am selling this to ABC and I want to be a part of that. You are gold to them. Do not hold on to the consciousness of actors past that say, oh, you are not a serious actor if you do it a different way. And let me tell you something, 95% of the actors are not working. Why are we still holding on to that consciousness when the odds are not in our favor by doing it that way? But yet here we are, still peddling, we got to do it the same way, still being unhappy. Okay. You keep doing it that way, but me, I'm going to turn up. Okay. Ooh, number, number seven. Okay. I'm going to tell this one through a story because it is, it just, it's just so powerful. Um, I uh, host a mastermind group. You might know it booked and busy mastermind, booked and busy mastermind. And one of my actors in this, this person's name was, give me another name. I I didn't plan for it. I don't want to say this name. (laughs) Why do we say Pat? There you go. Uh, this person's name was Pat and they are a client at innovative, right? client innovative and this person was saying i met with my agent at innovative and um i was asking is there anything else i could do i know it's slow right now you know i'm also getting a lot of self tapes right now but nothing is hitting i'm not booking and this agent said you are doing so well all of your tapes we look at them we see it they're coming across you all are great and this agent gave this key piece of advice and information that i am sharing with you. Get this. This agent said to my client, actors need to learn how to float. I'll say it again. Actors need to learn how to float in their career. When everything is done, you've done all the things. Everything is moving. You got the team that's working. You got the manager that's working. You're putting your best foot forward in your self tapes. You're in class, you're studying, you have a family, you need to learn how to float. I want you to think about that. So much of what we have been peddled, what we have been told is we got to hustle. We got to move. If we're not moving, if we're not putting 10,000 hours into our career, then we must not be doing it right. Then that's why we're not successful. Here's what I'm here to say to you. Sometimes everything is moving. It's like that iceberg picture where underneath it's so massive. It's going on and it might look very small up up above the water, but everything is moving. It is working in your favor. But we want what we want to do as actors, we gotta, we gotta control it. We gotta like, you know, put some pictures up on actors access or IMDB or you know, we gotta call our agent and say, wait, is it is it really slow? Learn how to float. Learn how to be for a while. Learn how to be. Pick up a hobby. You know? Put time into your your, your investment job. Do something else besides worry, worry, worry. That only begets more worry, worry, worry. If you trust your team, which you should. If you don't, then you shouldn't be with them. If you feel for real, for real, that your acting is up to par, not that you haven't booked because of booking ratios and self tapes and all that stuff, not that, but if you really believe that you are putting in your best work, your best work, and some of y'all know that y'all not putting in y'all best work and y'all upset when y'all go to these casting director workshops or you're all upset when you take these programs because you know they can't fix you in that instant, something that we've been on these doing for 20 years. Okay, I I digress, I digress. But if you know you're putting your best work, please float. I wish somebody had said that to me. 
I really do. I wish somebody had said that to me years ago. Please float. Learn how to float to one. That's so powerful to me. So powerful. I can't wait to hear what you think about that one too. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I can't wait to hear that. What you learned about it. What did you learn about yourself and your acting from last year? And and, and were any of these seven, um, did they make your seven for the last year of acting? I want to know. I want to know. You know, uh, you know, let me know on Instagram and, you know, take a, a screenshot or and, and, and throw it into my DMs and say, this is what I've learned or just reach out with a courier pigeon. You know, I want to make sure that you know that I appreciate you and, um, you know, and, and if you reach out to me, I always try to get back to everybody that reaches out to me about the podcast, every, every, everybody. So, you know, um, if, if you, uh, found this information useful in any way, consider sharing it. I know someone in your circle, I've said this before, even in your social media circles, they need to hear it. They need to hear it too. So I'm going to sign off with it for you this way. Don't quit. Borrow my faith in you. I am rooting for you so hard. Till next time.